welcome to Coaching for Creatives with Kirsten. My name is Kirsten Call. I'm a therapist trained life coach and a children's book author. Together, we'll get the drama out of our lives and onto the page. Let's get started. You are listening to episode 11, Difficult Conversations. Recently-ish, I had a very difficult conversation with one of my editors. If I had cleaned up my thoughts before sending an email to my agent, I would have avoided the most embarrassing moments of my life, but I didn't. After getting some edits for the book, edits, of course, I didn't agree with, I sent a panicked email to my agent. Not only was the email panicked, but it was also quite dramatic. After I took a few breaths, I wrote a calm and collected email to the editor where I said, can we please set up a meeting to talk about the edits? Unfortunately, that calm and collected email had my panicked email to my agent nested beneath. (laughs) When my editor saw that email, she responded as any human being or editor who has been criticized might respond. My stomach dropped to my knees. I thought I might vomit. (laughs) I already needed to have a difficult conversation with this editor to help them see my point of view and why I wanted certain words to say exactly as they were. But my inadvertent escalation of the situation made this difficult conversation an even more difficult conversation. After apologizing profusely by email and then on Zoom and trying to explain my dramatic response to the edits, we had a very cordial and friendly and actually connecting conversation. In fact, my editor admitted they had a very similar experience to me, where they were the one who wrote the panicked email that was seen by the wrong party. (laughs) Difficult conversations are a necessary part of life. We all have them or need to have them. Sometimes they're with our editors. Sometimes when we aren't jiving with our agents, we have to have the difficult breakup conversation. Sometimes we have to be blunt with a critique partner or a coworker or a spouse or a child. Difficult conversations have to happen if we want to live an emotionally healthy life, and by their very nature, they aren't easy. So here are seven steps for making difficult conversations as smooth as possible. Number one, manage your own thinking. Clean up your mind. Clean up your story before you have the talk. Usually before tough talk, we have words in our minds that may be negative, We may be telling ourselves, like I was in my example, that there's no way to fix this. We're usually feeling angry or sad or frustrated. Allow yourself to feel those feelings. It's important to process them. Maybe set a 90-second timer and close your eyes and really allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling. Name that feeling if it's frustration or anger or jealousy or whatever it is. Name the feeling. Pay attention to what happens in your body. Allow yourself to be truly in the feeling for the entire 90 seconds. And then allow yourself to let it go. Give yourself permission to let it go. When we intentionally choose our narrative, we can go into the conversation with an open mind, curious about how the other person feels and ready to communicate in a kind and direct way. Number two, decide the purpose of your discussion. Why are you having this conversation? Are you planning on leaving your agent? Would you stay if things changed? Are you leaving no matter what? Are you trying to convince someone of something? Are you trying to understand the other person? Are you trying to be understood yourself? Are you trying to change someone else's behavior? Are you willing to change your own behavior? Are you hoping to connect? Number three, be willing to be wrong. And this one is very important. Everyone at my house loves to be right. We sometimes are more concerned about being right than we are about the relationship. Something I like to say a lot at my house is, it's more important to be kind than to be right. Actually, I think I might have mentioned this last week. (laughs) Being stubborn about being right never helps in a conversation, but humility does. It's okay to be wrong. In fact, it's better in any difficult conversation if you're going into it deciding that it's okay to be wrong or that no one is wrong or right. It's okay for you to be misunderstood by someone else, and it's okay for you to misunderstand other people. Going into a difficult conversation with humility makes a huge difference. I did this in my conversation with my editor. Let's face it, I was forced to be humble. (laughs) 
My humility helped as we navigated the conversation about the book edits. And probably because I was humble, I was able to persuade my editor to see things my way and keep certain words exactly the way I wanted them. Number four, start the conversation with vulnerability. When we admit something is hard, it's easier for someone else to listen. Maybe say something like, I have something to talk to you about. It might be hard for you to hear, and it's also really hard for me to say. Share your experience in an authentic and open way, expressing how you feel, not how the other person has wronged you. Number five, listen to the other person. Be genuinely curious. When you really want to understand someone else, they can feel it. What they say may trigger defensiveness. If you feel defensive, then something inside you agrees with them a little. If you aren't triggered, it's because you know what they are saying isn't true. I recently heard an interview of Dolly Parton where she said blonde jokes don't bother her at all. Because first of all, she knows she's not dumb. And she also knows she's not blonde. (laughs) It's like someone saying, I hate your straight hair. That wouldn't hurt me at all because my hair is curly. Whether you agree with the other person or not, listen to the other person. Look them in the eyes. This leads to number six, which is very similar, but a little bit different. Let the other person know that you hear them. It's not enough to just listen. Make it clear that you're hearing what the other person says. Maybe even say, I hear you, even if you don't agree. And if you do agree a little, you can say, I can see where you're coming from. Truly listening to understand makes all the difference in a difficult conversation. Number seven, you get to feel however you want to feel. I'm going to say that again. You have the power to think and feel whatever you want to think and feel. You have a choice to distance yourself from someone, or you have the choice to communicate. Recognize you are two different people with different sentences in your brains. Difficult conversations are about communication and connection. Difficult conversations are worth it. Relationships are worth it connection is worth it. And you are worth it. Be dauntless in your difficult conversations. Until next time, keep smiling. If you like what you've heard, check out my Get Yourself Unstuck program. Go to kirstencall.com. That's K-I-R-S-T-I-N-E-C-A-L-L.com and schedule a free consultation today. Coaching for Creatives is produced by Kirsten Call. Music and audio engineering by James Call.